Hello there. Welcome to another midweek meditation. I am Reverend Devin, and this is a weekly meditation that I do for my churches in Hyde Park, Bakersfield, and Jeffersonville, Vermont. This is also a meditation that I do for anybody who's joining in over YouTube and is looking to nurture a progressive faith. If you're looking for a second opinion on how we can build up a loving faith within our lives, I hope that you like and subscribe, and please feel free to share these videos with anybody you feel called to. Hello, brothers and sisters. This is another one of my weekly meditations. Thank you for joining me. And this is the first week of Lent. And so, dust off those jogging shoes and pull those sardines out of the cupboard. I'm going to tell you why we Christians go through the trouble of Lent every year. And so let's start off with our reading. Our reading today comes from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All this I will give to you, if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Alright, so we are talking about the first Sunday of Lent and Ash Wednesday from last week. And the reading that we have here from Matthew chapter 4 is Jesus going out into the wilderness. Lent, in a lot of ways, is modeled around Jesus is 40 days in the wilderness. Lent lasts 40 days, and it also leads up to Easter, which is when Jesus was crucified and, well, Holy Week, Jesus was crucified and resurrected. And so, in a lot of ways, we are going through a ritualistic period, which represents, I feel in a lot of ways, Jesus preparing himself for ministry, but also Jesus' ministry as well, because we are leading up to the culmination of Jesus' time on earth with us here, where he shows us that God's love can beat all the evils, all the sin, all the bad stuff that this world throws our way. And so what we're trying to do during Lent, what Christians do during Lent, is we try to build up our own spirits. We try to refine our spirits so that we can be better loving people within the world. And usually what we do during Lent is we take on some sort of task. Something that would improve us that maybe we've been holding off on the back burner for a while. Something that is somewhat inconvenient for us or something that we normally would not do. I think that because we often take on this activity that feels like a sacrifice, the church, and also because the church in throughout history has framed it as a sacrifice, we tend to, or at least a lot of people, tend to look at Lent very negatively. But what I wanted to talk about, and what I did talk about this last week, was how our time during Lent is in a lot of ways meant to be time in the wilderness and how the wilderness in a lot of ways refines us and challenges us so that we can grow into better servants of God. So the reading from Matthew is a wilderness journey that reflects Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ had his own circumstances that he was dealing with when he went into the wilderness and I think that that's important for us to note because very often we as Christians try to model ourselves after Jesus, and the feeling is that we need to be doing exactly what Jesus did in order to be a perfect human being. Jesus was the perfect follower of God that he could be. But I do think that being a perfect follower of God for each and every one of us is going to be 
relative to who we are as people in this world. And so our wilderness is going to look different than Jesus's. And I think a good way in which we can make an example of that is the wilderness journey of Hagar, Abraham's slave, who bore his first child, Ishmael, after Abraham's wife, Sarah, had Isaac. Hagar and Ishmael were sort of unceremoniously cast off into the wilderness where they had to scrape by and survive, and by they, I mean Hagar, had to provide for her child while she was in a hostile land. And there came one point where she put Ishmael by a bush to keep cool, and she went off into the distance because she didn't want to see him die. And eventually God provided and guided Hagar to water and sustenance, and she was able to build a life for her and her son. But that struggle, I feel is a different different representation of the adversity of the wilderness than what we see Jesus go through where Jesus is confronted by Satan and Satan provides him you know says here's some food worship me Satan mocks God and says you know if God is so powerful show off your powers and Jesus is like don't put God to the test and then Satan is like I will give you all this power wealth and authority if you follow me and it's, Jesus is like, no, I'm falling back on my experiences and understanding as a rabbi of the Jewish tradition to bring out the most love that I can from my time here in the wilderness. Jesus' wilderness journey, journey, I need to point out, was a choice. He chose to go into the wilderness before he started his ministry. Whereas Hagar's wilderness journey was not a choice. And she was forced to struggle, to face adversity, and to survive. And I think that that is something that we need to be conscious of during Lent. We ceremoniously go into the wilderness in some way, shape, or form during Lent to try to bring out the most love that we can. But there are some folks who experience the wilderness differently than us. For us during Lent, it's almost like a tourist trip through adversity in the wilderness. But there are folks like Hagar, women, single mothers, trying to survive, who are in the wilderness every day. And I think we need to recognize that, and we also need to note that if there is love for us to build and bring out of our lives, we need to be using that in connection with others. We need to be listening to others, because others too have learned from adversity and have learned from their time in the wilderness. I think we also need to recognize that Lent has a very practical purpose. We are trying to bring out our best selves. We're trying to refine the love that we have in our lives, and that love is already there. A lot of people see Lent as a time of sacrifice, a time of kicking yourself for the mistakes that you've made in the past. I don't think that that's what Lent's about. Lent's about being intentional about the love that is in our life and try to bring it out into our lives. Sometimes we need to be intentional in order to be loving, because very often our love gets put on the back burner. Very often we are unable to see the struggles of our sisters and brothers in the wilderness that they find themselves in. So I'll use a personal example just to bring this home. Not that the Hagar story wasn't good enough. When I was a young person, a younger person, living in New York City. I would often get up early in the morning to go to work, and I would have to walk the city streets at night. Well, early morning, dark, it's just me, rats, cats, giant cockroaches, and I never thought too much of it. I'm a six foot one guy, and people never really seemed to mess with me when I was walking down the street early in the morning in the middle of the city. My sister lived in Manchester, and often, she often had to get up early in the morning and walk to work before the sun came up. And she told me a story about how one day she was followed around by a guy in a pickup truck who was literally catcalling, and when she tried to hide from him, he w circled the block, searching for her, and then drove off. That fear is of something like that happening is is real i've never had to experience it but i can recognize that it's real and it's not something that 
is an isolated incident. A lot of women feel anxiety when they have to walk a city street early in the morning by themselves because of incidents like that, because those sort of things happen. For some reason, it, there are men in our society who feel that they can disrespect another person because they are a woman, because they are an object to them, because that somehow is okay. That is a struggle that I've never had to deal with. That is an, a type of adversity that I've never had to deal with. It's never refined the love in my soul. It's not where the love in my soul comes from because I've not had to deal with it. And so I think as we go into Lent, what I would encourage you all is to consider the struggles that you faced in your life and try to find something to bring out the love in your life as well, but also consider the struggles and the wilderness journeys of others. Because we have a lot to learn from our brothers and sisters. And we have a lot to learn about the world and how we can do good in it from our brothers and sisters as well. Peace. Live long and prosper.